In this video, we use EventGrid and an Azure function to apply name and date tags to every new resource group. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Sereltos. Have you ever found yourself looking at resources in Azure and wondering who created it and how long has it been out there? This is handy information that's not always easy to find. We can add this information as tags automatically with EventGrid and an Azure function. Although it won't apply the information retroactively, it will apply the tags going forward. Before we get started, please like, subscribe, share, and click the bell icon for notifications of new content. If you'd like to learn more about Windows Virtual Desktop, check out my course, Zero to Hero with Windows Virtual Desktop at udemy.com. EventGrid is an Azure service that enables us to tie together different event sources, the origin of a signal, and event handlers, the service that processes the event. We use an Azure subscription as an event source to send data to an Azure function. The code in the function will add the creator name and date as tags to new resource groups, since that's the bucket that contains other resources. We'll use a system assigned managed identity to give the function the tag creator RBAC role. We're going to start by creating a PowerShell function app and creating a system assigned managed identity with the tag contributor role. Next, we configure event grid on the subscription to filter to only new resource groups. Then we test and review the event data. Finally, we enable the function to verify it works. Check the link below for the code used in this video. Let's get started in the Azure portal with deploying a function app. Here we are in the Azure portal. Let's start with a function app. Go to new to create a new function app. Create a new resource group. Auto tag RG01 for this example. Give the function app a name. Here I'll use auto tag 01. Leave the publisher as code. Set the runtime stack to PowerShell. And set the region you want to deploy to. Go to hosting. We can leave this as is, unless you have some reason to change it. Go to monitoring. And you can leave monitoring as well. And go to tags. I normally skip tags in these videos, but I feel like a creator and data tag should be added here, given the topic. Go to review and create. Next, create the function app. We'll give it a minute to finish. That finished, let's configure the function app. Go to the resource. Go to app files. And from here, select the file requirements.psd1. We have to uncomment the az equals five dot asterisk in order to use the az module in this function app. Go ahead and uncomment the line az equals five. That will enable the az module for this function app. Click save and go back to overview. Issue a restart on the service so we know the az modules are available. Let's create the managed identity next. Go to identity under settings. Enable the system assigned managed identity. This will provide the function app an identity to use to interact with the subscription. A system assigned managed identity will have the same life cycle as the function app. Once the function app is removed, the managed identity will go with it. Turn it on and click save. The identity has been created. Let's give it rights to manage tags next. Go to Azure Role Assignments. Add a role assignment. We'll leave the scope as subscription. Select your subscription and under role, search for tag. Tag contributor. And save. Refresh and we can see the role. 
It may take a minute or two before that role shows as available. There it is. And if the role doesn't show for you, you may have to reload the web page or leave the role assignment page and come back. Now the function will have access to manage tags in the subscription. Let's create the function next. We'll go back to the function app and go to functions. A function app can have many functions within it. For this example, we're only using one function app and one function, but you could add other functions to this function app or add this function to an existing PowerShell function app. Anyway, go to functions and click add. Under templates, scroll down and select Azure Event Grid Trigger. There it is. Give it a different name if you'd like and click add. Go to code and test. Once triggered, Event Grid will pass in data, including the username and the resource group ID. For me, it helps to see this data to understand how to use it as variables in the function. Add the block of code that will convert the event grid data into JSON. This is available within the comments of the function. The link to that is below. This block of code takes the contents of event grid events, converts it to JSON, and then writes that to the screen. We'll update this with the full function in a later step. For now, all we want to see is the JSON data. Click Save. Now it's time to enable Event Grid. All resource groups are created in the subscription. Let's go to the subscription next. Go to Events in the subscription and select Azure Function. Give it a name. This one will be called AutoTag01. Leave it as event grid schema. For the resource group, select the resource group we added the function app to. This example was auto tag RG01. A system topic is a grouping of one or more events published by a service. Give it a name. This example will use new resource group event. We only want the function to run when a new resource group is created. Change the event type to remove everything but resource write success. Select Azure function as the endpoint. Select the endpoint. Make sure your subscription is selected and then select the resource group for the function app. Auto tag RG01 for this example. Make sure your function app and the correct function is selected and click confirm selection. Go to filters. As the event sits now, every time a resource or resource group is created, an event will trigger. We need to filter this so it only triggers when a new resource group is created. Add a new filter with the following information. The key is data.authorization.action. The operator is string contains. And the value is Microsoft.resources forward slash subscriptions forward slash resource groups forward slash write. This information is also located in the function app. The link is below. Finding this information is kind of a chicken and an egg scenario. We have to see the event details to identify the filter, but we can't get the information until we create an event in the function app. I'll point out where I found this information shortly. That's all we need to configure for the event subscription. Click Create. Next, we need to create a resource group to see the output. Let's go to the function app. We'll go into the function app, go into functions, select the function we just created, and go to code and test. Once in there, go to logs, and we'll leave this open. This is going to show us the output stream as we create the resource group. 
Next, let's create the resource group to verify the trigger. Here, I'll create a new resource group. This example will be called test event RG. Okay, that's been created. Let's go back to the function. It will take a minute or two for the event to show up. I'll pause here until it finishes. Here it is. Let's make this a little bigger. This shows all the output streams. The last command wrote the data in JSON format. After one of the last informational messages, there is a squiggly bracket. That's the start of the JSON data. Copy everything starting with that first squiggly bracket to the last one before the next informational message. So squiggly bracket to squiggly bracket. Copy that. Now let's go to VS Code or another JSON enabled code editor and paste this into a new JSON file. Here we are in VS Code. Let's create a new file. We'll call this events.json. Paste in that information. Next, we'll make it readable by going Control Shift P to open the command palette and go Format. Okay, here's the file. Let's close the terminal. Now we have something in a more readable format. Let's look at the example we used for the filter. Go to data, authorization, and action. And the value for this is Microsoft.resources, subscriptions, resource group, write. That is the source of the resource group creation filter. You could change this function to tag more than just resource groups by creating or adding additional filters. Let's just stick to resource groups for now. We need two pieces of information in order to add tags with a creator name and a function. First is the name. Let's look under data, claims, and then name. That's a good start. Let's take a look at the code we'll use for the finished function. The name value variable maps to the name in the event data. We also need the URI of the resource group. Let's go back to the events. It's listed in here under data, resource URI. That's the URI of the resource group that's created. Let's go back to the code we'll use for the function. This is a fairly simple script once we have the data from the event. We start by getting the event grid data. After that, we get the date. This example is using the US month, day, year format. You can change that to a different format, something that may make more sense. We get the username and then we add those values to a new tag hash table. There are some write output sections so we can see what's getting passed around. This is informational. You can comment it out if needed. Then we have a try catch block that runs an update az tag command to add the tags. My first version of this used the new az tag command, but that removed the existing tags. This command will add tags without removing any existing tags. Let's copy the code into the function. We'll go back to the function app. We can close logs. We'll highlight everything in here and delete it, and we'll replace everything with the new code. Click save. Make sure logs are open. Let's go back and remove that resource group and re-add it. We'll first use the remove command to remove the resource group. This will just take a minute to finish. And let's recreate it. 
This time the function app should attach those values as tags to the resource group. Let's go back to the function app. We can keep tabs on it this way to see when it finishes. Let's give it a minute to complete. The function app finished. Let's review the resource group. We'll go back to VS Code and run get az resource group. There it is. The resource group now has the tags of creator with my name and the date created with today's date. That's how you create a function app that adds the creator name and date to a resource group automatically. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.